Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 4, William Wells Brown. One of the most important African-American thinkers of the 19th century, William Wells Brown was a slave from his birth until his escape at the age of 19. Like dozens of other escaped slaves, Brown published an autobiographical narrative about that period of his life, but moved on thereafter to become a pioneer in multiple literary genres. Although it was first published in England, his 1853 book Clotel is the first novel published by an African-American author. Likewise, the two dramatic works he published after returning from England in the mid-1850s are considered the first plays by an African-American writer. He also produced works of history and biography, as well as lecturing on abolition and abstinence from alcohol, throughout a lengthy career as a public scholar that lasted until his death in 1884. This excerpt from his novel, Clotel, describes the complex social status of mixed-race children in mid-19th century America, particularly those with notable, if also unacknowledged, fathers. In all the large towns in the southern states, there is a class of slaves who are permitted to hire their time of their owners, and for which they pay a high price. These are mulatto women, or quadroons as they are familiarly known, and are distinguished for their fascinating beauty. Kerr was a bright mulatto and of prepossessing appearance, though then nearly 40 years of age. In her younger days, Kerr had been the housekeeper of a young slaveholder, but of later years had been a laundress or washerwoman, and was considered to be a woman of great taste in getting up linen. The gentleman for whom she had kept house was Thomas Jefferson, by whom she had two daughters. Jefferson being called to Washington to fill a government appointment, Kerr was left behind. Kerr resolved early to bring up her daughters as ladies, as she termed it, and therefore imposed little or no work upon them. To bring up Clotel and Althesa to attract attention, and especially at balls and parties, was the great aim of Kerr. Although the term Negro Ball is applied to most of these gatherings, a majority of the attendants are often whites. These are democratic gatherings, where gentlemen, shopkeepers, and their clerks all appear upon terms of perfect equality. And there is a degree of gentility and decorum in these companies that is not surpassed by similar gatherings of white people in the slave states. It was at one of these parties that Horatio Green, the son of a wealthy gentleman of Richmond, was first introduced to Clotel. The young man had just returned from college and was in his 22nd year. Clotel was 16 and was admitted by all to be the most beautiful girl, colored or white, in the city. So attentive was the young man to the quadroon during the evening that it was noticed by all and became a matter of general conversation, while Kerr appeared delighted beyond measure at her daughter's conquest. From that evening, young Green became the favorite visitor at Kerr's house. He soon promised to purchase Clotel as speedily as it could be effected and make her mistress of her own dwelling. And Kerr looked forward with pride to the time when she should see her daughter emancipated and free. Follow the link at the top of this page to the entry on Brown at the University of North Carolina's Documenting the American South Project. There you can find the full text of Clotel, as well as more details about Brown's life and career. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio. Can you hear it? I can hear it.